Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this time we are getting it all in What Remains of Edith Finch. Now this was developed by Giant Sparrow, published by Annapurna Interactive, and is usually available for $15.99, but has been and still is on Xbox Game Pass for a while. Now you're probably wondering why I'm doing a guide for a game release in 2017, and here's why. Number one. This game is amazing and I can't wait to go through it with anyone that hasn't yet played it. Number two, if anyone hasn't heard, I am setting a challenge for myself to complete every single game and do guides for every single Game Pass game. And yes, that includes the likes of Halo and all the rest of the big boys. But I'm going in order of smallest amount of hours to largest and this game ended up being first. So, here we are. Now it'll either be ambitious but rubbish Top Gear style or ambitious and awesomely funny, which I'm trying to make the style of the time. Now as for the game's achievements, there are 10 in total, they're mostly missable, so keep an eye out in each chapter and for timestamps. Only one may be annoying, and that's for catching two rabbits with two swoops, and by that I mean because we're playing as a bird. Other than that, it's basically an awesomely told walking sim with mini levels which can be done in around one and a half hours. So, with that being said then, let us begin and get this GPC, Game Pass Challenge, going! So, you're going to start off with the boat, immediately look down with the right stick, and then we're going to interact with it a lot with this game by pressing the right trigger. So, look down at the book, press the right trigger to open up the, the uh, book right here. And, wow, that's a fantastic journal. And you've, you've actually got to um, press the left stick as well to get it going. Left or the right stick, I don't think it makes a difference, but you've got to actually turn some pages in the game. Some go automatically, some go as manual as hell. But basically, this is a very happy, cheery game about a young girl going back to her old house. And from there, it gets decidedly worse. Now, why the hell would she do that? I don't know. Basically, this family is more cursed than the Kennedy family. And if you don't know who that is, uh, get, you know, have a look at your American politics and everything. Basically, there was big um, John F. Kennedy got assassinated. Yeah, a, a lot of other people died in that family as well, which is a damn shame. But this is worse because, well, we're just going to see. So, go here then. The only linear path that we got, but we're going to get an achievement straight away. There's going to be like a split in the road coming up. Um, there's no sprint or anything like that. There's just a lot of walking and talking, which is all good. So, from here, what we're going to do is go down the left path. Uh, because I find this is the quicker one and the less awkward one. So, head on the left path. It's all pretty much linear. There's only one way you can go. Um, slightly left, straight. And then we're going to go slightly right and straight. Eventually. There we go. So, it's it's just... It's it's nice. You know, it, for all the events that are coming up, this is co actually quite a nice walk. Uh, <laughs> So, again, just keep going. It's more or less straight all the way. You've got the um, little bridge that we're going to cross over now. The woods around the house and then what we're going to do is come up to the end of this and then go back on ourselves on the other road. And that is what will unlock us the first achievement for taking both roads to the housing trousen. So, there we go. Coming up to it now. The, the only... If you want to call it a bad thing about this, I know it's supposed to be an atmospheric game and, oh, everything's... Amazing, and it's not. Anyway, when we get here, turn to the right, basically doing a 360, and just head all the way up this hill, and that is what will unlock us the achievement. But as I was saying, there's going to be one which I, I kind of just wish that they put a little jog button in it at least. Or, you know, a full-on sprint. But, you know, you can't have everything. You can't have an awesomely told uh, game and a sprint button in the same one. It's just, it's just not right. Anyway, as we head all the way to here, we're going to see this tree trunk, and this is where the achievement is going to unlock us, clock us. But I saw a few footprints. Eventually, it's going to unlock us, clock us. There it is. Right, so, all roads. Now, what we're going to do is just walk straight back down and just keep heading towards the house for now. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable. So as we're coming up to this fantastic looking house, if that was done up, that would be 
beautiful, even if cursed. Anyway, we're going to get to the garage, and we're going to go to the left side of said garage. And basically, there are ten little peepholes that we need to look through in order to get an achievement later on. And the first one is under this fence. So, you can press the left trigger or left bumper to zoom in. And again, press the right trigger to interact with these said um, holes. Also, when we go have a look through each of these peepholes, make sure that Edie starts talking first. Because you need to, you can't just look in and immediately back out. You've got to wait until Edie starts talking. Um, Edith, sorry. Edie's the grandmother. We'll come to that later. Uh, but yes, yeah, so as soon as Edith starts talking, that's fine. You can then back out. And that was what will get us the achievement. So, here's a nice looking garage. Um, I don't know how long this has been abandoned for, but I might take some stuff. I might take some stuff and sell it on. Best I can give you is three bucks. Anyway, through the garage, into the house and trousen, and god damn, there are a lot of books. Nobody needs to read that much. Books are good, but nobody needs to read that much. Anyway, from here, we're going to go to the right, sort of in this um, front door area, and have a look at this door. Again, pressing the uh, right trigger to zoom in, wait until Edith starts talking, and you can press the B button to back out. Immediately, go up the stairs then, from the left. Again, you know, why not just buy a library if you've got this many books, but... At the top of the stairs, go into the left, basically back down towards where the staircase is. Have a look on the left, and we've got Barbara's room. Very young, these uh, unfortunately cursed people. Anyway, look in, wait until Lily starts talking, back, back, out. And then what we can do is just come back the way of the staircase and head left down. There's going to be three doors that we're going to be peeping through now. Um, one on the right, one on the left, one in the middle. Sven Hofstad. Hello, my name is Sven. I was just England football manager once, and we sucked, because the England football team is shocking. <laughs> anyway, there we go. So that's Gregory's. Is that supposed to be a room, or was that a toilet? I, I've seen a lot of pink on the toilet. That's hmm, a bold. So there we go. So that should be the third one then. So Calvin, Gregory, and Sven. So that should be three doors going back the way we came. Head to the left and go straight past the stairs. And have a look on the left-hand side for Molly's room. Ten years old. Wow, man, that is... This is getting... God, God, God damn. Anyway, we're going to check out the stories anyway. So turn back around, go through the open door. And we can now interact with this thing on the left-hand side. Um, press and hold the right trigger. Sometimes you've got to press and hold the right trigger for a while. Until the mechanic is done. 20,000 leagues under the sea. That'll be us now when the COVID Omicron hits and then it's another variant and then we've got our 20 millionth jab. They'll just send us under sea instead. It's just easier than jabbing us all, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so, for one, whoever's building these secret passageways is awesome. And two, why are you building secret passageways, you freak? Eh. So again, with certain doors and everything, you've got to lift it up by pressing up on the left or right stick. But here we are in Molly's room. Go to the right here, just by on the sort of desk drawer. Press the right trigger, and we're going to start the first sort of level of the game. I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. So we are starving, hungry little girl. The first thing we do, look to the right, go over to the gerbil cage, and interact with the gerbil food. Now, you'd think nobody would be that hungry, or how long are you... Oh, that was a carrot, I suppose, wasn't it? Um, you can interact with the door like I do, but all it says is, Mum, please, I'm actually starving, I'm going to die soon. And she says, uh, what would you say? Piss off or something, which is... Well, I guess we'll die then. Anyway, to the right side of the bedroom, uh, go into the bathroom and interact with the berries on the window. I mean, you might as well, if you're eating poisonous berries like that, you might as well just get the um, Hollybush stingy boys, down you? Turn around, anyway, and interact with the toothpaste. So, for one, she's got a nice bathroom to herself, and two, for some reason, this makes me want to vom my nuts up. J ugh. And she, she didn't half, you know, she got didn't get half-hearted with it, did she? Anyway, out of the bathroom to the right here, we are going to interact with the window, and we are going to turn into a little pretty cat. And... Again, <laughs> if you're that hungry and hangry, you will do weird things like turn into a cat and try and eat some birds. So, all we're doing then is just following the bree, bree tranche. I'll say that one again. Tree branches. Just keep looking where the birds go in. Um, you can jump, I think, with the right trigger. Sorry. It is with the right trigger you can jump with. But wherever the bird goes, just jump 
onto the next branch or the next roof or whatever. But just keep following for now. So it's, it's a pretty linear one for the time being. Just follow where he is and just keep on going straight. So, see, I told you it was pretty easy. Anyway, from here, what we're going to do is actually go to the right now and jump down. So, look like you couldn't. Now, what you need to do is actually get up on top of the um, sort of banister here. There's probably an easier way to do it, but just jump on the table anyway when we can do that. And now we can start moving forward again. And eventually, he's going to get up to the highest point, like there. So what we need to do, you can't actually jump to him even though you are that good. Jump to the tree branch to the right of you, climb up and behind, climb up on this one, up again, and this time we have our prey. It's KFC time, bitches! And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. So here we go then with the potentially difficult achievement. What you need to do when Molly says rabbit, we need to follow it and then press and hold the right trigger. And you need to catch the two rabbits in two swoops. So if you do miss, um, try quitting out to the main menu and uh, reloading back in. Hopefully it just replays the chapter again. So here we go then. From here, I press, the, press and hold the right trigger and just aim until you get towards the rabbit like so. And that's one delicious boy done. And that is what they put in the McDonald's burgers as well. So, goddamn tasty, really. And again, sorry if you're vegan and now you hate me and you've just unsubscribed. Sorry, but damn, a fat git and fat gits need need more than leg cheers to eat and salad. So, um, fly about. I'm not sure if the rabbits are in a random position, um, but as soon again as Molly says, "Mama rabbit," again, get get your get your aim on it. Press the hold, hold the right trigger, and then aim till you get it, and snap that boy up. And that is what should get you the achievement. So, great owl achievement for you. Again, if you do miss, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to just quit out to the main menu and jump back in without any issues. And now we've turned into a shark, which is just awesome. So, we're going to roll down this hill first. And then what we need to do, we can press the A button. We need to basically start jumping a little bit. Hopefully you got in a bit of a better position than I did. So this is how Jaws began. He sort of turned from owl into shark and then ate a bunch of people. And everyone enjoyed it. Apart from all the dead people, of course. Nobody enjoys that, but just keep on. Keep on rolling, keep on rolling, rolling, rolling. Almost die. And jump down, lovely. So this bit, nothing else to do except... Press the right trigger to go fast, and look for a seal. You need to get, you need to kill this seal twice, or try and eat it. And it can be a slippery son of a bitch, but I believe in you. Okay, now we are basically like this symbiote type thing. Uh, we're just going to call it a snake because it's easier. But basically, just move forward with the left stick. And then to you have to press the right trigger to get the camera uh, basically back to where we are. So Or to teleport, sorry. That's what it's called in the game, teleporting. So keep moving forward and then pressing the right trigger. Uh, so just keep on going. We're going to go left, right, meow. And we're going to go right, just underneath this uh, lorry or car or whatever it is, because we can get anywhere else. So this is basically how Venom 3 starts. And there's nothing wrong with Venom. Why, why are people complaining about the Venom films for? I like them. Anyway, big guy here. All you got to do is just go up to him, and you're going to snap his nuts off. Pretty, that's, that's a pretty horrific. Pretty horrific way to go. Having the... Having the absolute nut juice sucked out of you. Ah, 
and not in a good way either. Anyway, heading all the way back up the stairs, we are coming up to yet another missable achievement. Uh, we basically, as we turn to the right, we need to go to the right here, and then back down again. Keep pressing the right trigger to teleport yourself. But we're going to go into the left through this open door, but do not kill the drunken sailor. Sort of stay as we go through this door, press the right trigger, and we're going to sort of stay. Do not go and kill the sailor just yet. The guy's singing, who is completely passed out on Jack Daniel's honey and coke. Blamissimo! Um, but this song takes a... <laughs> it, does, it takes a while, to be honest. It takes about two minutes, and I wish we could kill him sooner, but we just can't. So to get the achievement, don't kill him. J just sing along. It's a, it's a catchy tune. I've heard it sung better, but... Uh, hey, what's better than being totally pissed up, huh? And boop, boop, boop. right there it is. Now, just for the fact we have to listen to all of that, now we can kill him, but kill him extra. <laughs> His floppy head. Anyway, from here, just keep going straight and then out through the other open door to the left. And we're going to go up the steps and then in through the next open door right here. We're going to kill the captain because, you know, I mean, th that is actually proper, you know. The dirty anime stuff, isn't it? Where they, you know, big tentacle porn and everything. Yeah, Who likes that? Oh, please. You're a 16-legged tentacle man. Please put them all up my butt. Why is that so... Why do people get so horny about that? Anyway, as we are tentacly porny, we are going to just go straight. And eventually, this section is going to end as soon as we get through the hole. Again, an anime lover's dream. So, we are <laughs> into the toilet. Um, I think you got to press the right trigger or the A button to jump off. One of the two. Apologies, I can't remember what it is. Otherwise, you're just going to keep circling around the toilet. So, when we jump off, we can head through the door. It's getting pretty tricky. And then all we got to do is just head towards Molly's bed on the right-hand side. And that basically ends at this section. All of my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know I will be delicious. I will be delicious. The end she died so good start then 10 year old kid got starved to death <sniffs> lovely that's uh that's always a good start isn't it yeah cheers for starving me ma'am yeah flipping bitch so got a lot to get through and lucky they're all quite short so from here what we're actually going to do is head out of the window um which we are literally right by but for some reason i'm having trouble with that so <laughs> when we move to the left there out the window and luckily, Edith isn't going to go bird hunting this time and snake killing and be becomes a 16-man anime's dream, anime lover's dream tentacle ban. 
But we are just going to go straight, and we're just going to head through the next window. Now, not every family member has, like, a mini-level type thing. Sometimes it's just as easy as looking through a book, and then she draws it in. So, we're into a disgustingly smelly old man's room. Great Grandma Edie's room. Head to the left, interact with the book, and we're going to have a little look at Eden. Odin? Eden. Uh, just keep pressing the right trigger until we get to this, until we finish this whole set of photographers. Photographs. Uh, again, hold and uh, press and hold the right trigger there, and then eventually we get to the beginning, like there. So we're gonna, there's a lot of interesting stuff. So if you're actually paying attention to the story, it's unbelievable how unluckily cursed this family is. So there we go. As I was just saying, sometimes it's as easy as looking through something. And um, we've got big Odin, who died. So, he died, let's move on. Go to the right side of the bed, interact with the door, get your noggin in there, and here we are in the pinkest, fluffiest bathroom I've ever seen. Now, imagine the poop particles in there. Interact with the book um, on, <laughs> on the toilet, but can you imagine... Can you imagine, you know, you're raising like a one and a two year old and stuff, they've pooped on the floor, and it's just all stuck in there. Ugh. Nah, I'm not feeling that. If you've got carpet in your bathroom right now, rip it up, get it out. You can't be having dump particles in your bloody bedroom. Um, right, anyway, you've got to actually interact with all of these little slots and then press the right trigger to interact this with this secret door. Get out of the um, crap stained, infested disgustingness that is the fluffiest crap I've ever seen. And now we can just go on again. Another secret room. A lot of uh, talented people in this cursed dead family. And just interact with the chair. Push that boy out the way. And it's going to be another kid that we are coming up to. Calvin. Calvin. This could be like a museum, couldn't it? Edith, you could have made money from this. Uh, <laughs> could have made money from your own dead family. Anyway, interact with the fell foot rope. Going up the steps. And then we're going to interact with a little... Um, what's this called? Space Helmet. So interact with that, and then we're going to start Little Calvin's level. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. Okay, so it's a short level. There's only one thing to do. You need to press and hold both the left and right trigger, and go back and forth with the left stick to give yourself a good bit of a mention, because... Uh, motivate, uh, yeah, momentum, sorry, Jesus, my head. Because that is, is of course, how you swing. If you manage to swing with uh, up and down, with incredible height, with one broken leg, then I will pay you 50 bucks. If not, I'm not going to pay you 50 bucks because I don't have 50 bucks. So, this is all we're doing for this bit then. Just keep, when you're going up, obviously, left trigger and right trigger. And back and forth for momentum. Job done. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Alvin, I'm not gonna tell you again. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. <laughs> the day he made up his mind to fly. I'm flying without wings. Ah, shit, it's a rock. <laughs> oh, d and he died. Oh, and he did. <laughs> that said, <laughs> well, no, he died. So that's unfortunate. This, so that's Calvin, little eleven-year-old Calvin. It's, there's a lot of death kids in this actually, which is very, very sad. Um, so Calvin went flying without wings, hit his nugget on a rock, and um, well, he died. So. We are now, uh, I mean, we're depressed enough already, so we might as well just keep on going, right? So go to the right-hand side, all the way to the other end of the bedroom, next to these sort of books. Interact again, pressing the left stick to open it up. And then again, 
pressing the right trigger and then lifting it up will get us through to the next section. I tell you what, if, the, if this family weren't so deadingly cursed, the engineering awards and money they must have, it's bloody ingenious. Although it is just a game, I suppose. Anyway, going forward, we're going to see creepy ass looking pumpkin head. And we are coming up to, I believe, Barbara's room. Yes. Bra <laughs> Barbara, who was a child star, but who is no longer. But this was actually one of my favourite levels. So into the next room on the right there is the comic book. Um, this plays like a mini level. Definitely <laughs> my most favourite one, to be honest, through it. Um, so let's take a look. And we are going to have my ex-girlfriend talk about it. Yes, I can pick him. Inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up. A has been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just a boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <coughs> Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was cancelled. Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him right on cue. So let us finally begin the level then. So press the right trigger and then move the left stick to go, 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 Sally, go. Go, Barbara, go. We're going to interact with the door. My ex-girlfriend sounds better narrating this than she used to. <laughs> just, just joking. No more ex-bashing, okay? Yeah, <laughs> red. Heading down the stairs, we're going to interact with the crutch. And she's already imagined the worst, which is just always not very funny. So, missable achievement time here as well. Press the right trigger to hit all of the balls off of the table. Um, depends how good or crappy your aim is. You might get this done in 20 seconds. But for me, my aim, I, I'm basically aiming like I've got one big can of giant crap in my eye. Um, I don't know who sells cans of giant crap, but it's, they're out there somewhere. And they're all in vegan shops. <gasps> I'm just joking, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm sorry, v vegans, That there's some tasty food. Some wood there you can fry up for a bit. It's delicious. A bit of salt and pepper on that, right? That's fine. Anyway, when you've cleared all the pool, uh, balls of the pool table, go through into the next room and go to the right. Uh, past the punching bag and down towards the fridge. I'll just interact with the fridge. Oh, dear. Oh. Rick? Barb, relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you She threw him out, but she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? 
and she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Hours later... Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up, but if this is a trick, we're dead. Oh, no, eh. Somebody is in the house. Let us get them. So, heading down, and we're going to go to the left and up the stairs. Halloween looks good. <laughs> As we've got the uh, Halloween style music going on. Creepy stuff. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's, it's the Halloween music that gets me. I love it. So into the right, we're going into little Walter's bedroom. Go towards the bed. Vanished, but his bedside radio was still on. Orcas Island Police describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and... Speechless. He was quite smashing. Whoa! Somebody's coming to get you. Right, so we're gonna run away. So turn to the right, and then just go through the open sort of window slot right here. Get your buns through that, Huns. She played her part beautifully. See, I could be like an ugly pumpkin guy. Oh, I'm already ugly, so I just need the pumpkin head yet. Um, anyway, going through, uh, have a look through at Molly's door. You don't actually have to hit it. I just thought, you know, why why not draw attention to myself? Hey, Mr. Murderer Hook Guy, I'm in here. Anyway, go towards him, give him a whack with the right trigger, and somehow, even though he hit his head against the door, he ends up going backwards and falling. It's that's just, um, that's just everything for you, I suppose, isn't it? But what we're going to do now is head downstairs, into the living room, and crap all your pencils. If you were Barbara, anyway. Right, so, what you would do is actually just normally get the hell out of Dodge. So that's what we're going to do. Head towards the door, and then nothing can possibly go wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, possibly go wrong. That's the first thing that's ever gone wrong. It's coming from inside the house. <gasps> oh, dear. Surprise! Bravo! You are wonderful! Bravo! The monsters had come to surprise her! For Barbara, it was a dream come true. Then she saw what kind of monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter? Hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard, but that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. That's what I call a real eerie tale. <laughs> so that was basically the first story where it basically mentions she was definitely murdered. And she died. And she died, yes. Yeah, she died. Um, but again, the, the way the stories are told in this game are just unbelievable. They're so, so good. And there should be like a, a second game, but with the kid this time. Even though we've 
basically covered everything in this game anyway. So, heading back towards the room we came out of and just nip back down to the box and then we can go um, through the sort of glass doors coming up to our right. I guess now I know I'm... And there it is. So, head your buns out of there to get back into the main hall. So, let's go looking for old Walter Reeney, is it? Okay, so from here we're going to head down the stairs again. So, Walter seen her sister get her ass chopped, literally and figuratively, and from here we're going to go to the right, sort of back, sort of uh, towards the living room area, but interact with this box right here. Again, we're going to be spinning around, so right trigger and then left trigger, uh, right trigger and then left stick all the way around, keep going until the key pops out. Uh, that's just basically the song on uh, from the music box, if you're wondering. It's exactly what I just done. More Peter Griffin style. Thank God I don't look Peter Griffinish. So we're into the sort of basement of sorts, little pool room. Everything's looking nice here. Obviously, didn't get the wall finished. Uh, head to the right, and then to the right again. And it, it does get a bit dark in this section, but just interact with the fridge directly in front of us. And then, of course, what that's going to be is... Oh, wait, it's not a fridge. It's a secret room. Head through the next door. Go on, Edith, boy. Use them Stoltman brother biceps now. And then sort of look up so you can... No, oh, in fact, we're already looking up. Uh, just keep walking forward is what I meant to say, so the lights can flicker on by themselves. Again, incredible bulb service on this one. Must have only cost him a quid or two. Uh, again, kind of a linear path, this one, but here we are at the end, and this is Walter's little bunker. Uh, ma, a good. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. So then, all we're doing for the next minute or two for Walter's level is pressing the right trigger to get the, um, uh, what's it called, the scrapey thing? This thing, tin opener, can opener? That's the boy. And then you've got to rotate the right stick, left or the right stick, sorry, I forget which one again. I think it's the right stick, but just rotate it anyway until the can opens up. And he's going to have the most disgusting looking and sounding peach halves, even though they look more like boiled potatoes, but, you know, what do I know, huh? Uh, but we're just going to keep doing this over and over again until we start to leave, until Walter's like, you know what, 30 years of crapping out peach halves and then digesting it again. Uh, no, no, I'm done with that. I like KFC, please. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just... stopped. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe you got tired of waiting. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now. The longest in 30 years. So that's it then. Now Walter wants diarrhea from some other food instead of the goddamn peach potato looking halves. Whatever the hell they're meant to be. How are you getting enough for 30 years without anybody knowing that you are down here? Well, that's incredible, Walter. I'll give you that. But anyway, head down the hatch that we just opened up. And then once again, then all it is is basically just one long linear path. So we're going to follow it until we get to a sledgehammer at the end. Again, pressing the right trigger to pick it up. Give it a slam. And uh, yeah, we're going to get out. Finally. Whatever killed Barbara. It was me! <laughs> no, it was not me. Yeah, pretty sad. Pretty sad, actually. Pretty much very sad. But here's the sledgehammer then. Just keep slamming it out until uh, we can start walking forward again on the train tracks. Same day. Even if it kills me. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left. Or a month. Or a single week. I'd be happy with 
with one new day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. And he's dead. And he died. So, unlucky, Walter. You, for some reason, forgot that trains go on a train track. Therefore, you can't stay on a train track. Uh, pff, whatever, anyway. Uh, sorry there, but, 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 a bit of lag in there for some reason when she was drawing Big Walter in. But Walter's dead because he was a bit dumb right there. Although, I suppose you're not going to remember, are you, really? So, we're going to basically go the same way. So, open up the hatch, go down... And follow the same way that Walter did. Again, it's quite a linear path, so near panics. But then again, like I said, if you ever feel stupid, just remember that Maybe somebody got it. killed by a train <laughs> about two minutes after he was walking on it after spending 30 years underground in a bunker. Unlucky mucker. You can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. Trying to bury something that's still alive. <sighs> now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse. Eed, Eed, Edith Finchy, watch out for that train! Ah! <sighs> no, luckily there's no train, everything's all dead. So, we're going to do a little bit of walking. So, heading to the left from the train track. I don't know if I should even be riding this. And, there's basically, as we head down to the beach, there's going to be a set of steps towards us. So, every time that Edith starts talking, the camera's going to pan to where the Maybe dialogue is, as you can probably just tell right there. So as soon as you get down to the beach, just turn around and there's going to be a set of steps for us to uh, climb up. So it's heading down here and then I basically end up going around the rock to come back up to go up the next set of steps. Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these... Lovely jubbly. From here, we're going to go to the right. And we're going to head up all the way up these steps. Basically, we're coming up now to another closer look. So, I think there were seven that we got in the house immediately. But there are three more. And one of them is just coming up in this microscope. So, just keep heading up and through the gate at the top. Make sure not to fall and die, because that would have been pointless. That history of imagination and stubbornness and madness. Any of it's... And there we go then, when we open it up, all we're doing is heading to the right. So don't go down the alleyway, just go right here, and then again, just keep following the linear path. To be fair, if this has been yours, there's not a lot of rust on that bike. You might as well just take that one home, cycle home. But then who wants to do cardio? No one. Nobody and nothing wants to do cardio. I don't, anyway. Powerlifters definitely don't. Strong men definitely don't. Fat people like me definitely don't. <laughs> Anyway, so we've got the pet cemetery, and that is also a lot of dead pets. Jesus Christ. And there is the uh, human cemetery. So everyone's buried together. That's nice. What happens if you're the last person, by the way? You can't bury yourself, can you? You'd be dead. Fuming, mate. <laughs> you're just going to be dead somewhere. Anyway, heading all the way up here, and we're going to go down the other side of these big old statues. And here is where the... Eighth closer look should be so again interact with this one wait till Edith starts talking Like now would be good In fact you gotta zoom in first sorry just zoom in then she's gonna start talking and then we can back out So again my apologies almost steered you wrong there. I'm so sorry. Oh We managed to get there again a little bit of jogging would have gone Epically better this time, but since it didn't we need to just basically walk all the way back but yeah, that's a bit unlucky, isn't it? You know, you go, right, if I die, you bury me. Okay, no worries. If I die, you bury me. Yeah, no worries. Who buries the last one? Oh, Tamin. Probably just get eaten by wolves and maggots. Delicious way to go. So, we're heading up these steps now. And you can probably just see a ladder in front of us. That is also where we're heading up. We're basically heading up to the two last boys' rooms, uh, more or less now. But 
looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Oh, man! Edith is 22 weeks pregnant! That is unlucky. You know what, I'm... Z I'll always be zero weeks pregnant, and I'll never be able to climb and sneak my way through crap. I just get too knackered. So, props to women who get pregnant and do stuff still. I and my respect to you. So, heading up the ladder, <laughs> going through the door. Again, use the left trigger, uh, the left stick to move it away. And you've got a delicious looking beer rug, but head to the left. And on the cabinet or the table here next to us, interact, hold the right trigger, and flip it up. And get all the pictures going. So this little mini level is that we're going to take a bunch of pictures, but there is one missable achievement. Stop taking pictures of me, you goddamn nouns. So to use the camera, you use the left stick to zoom in and out. So up and down equals in and out, and press the right trigger to take a picture. Um, so when it's clear, take a picture of Dawn right here. Now for the next picture, do not take a picture of Dawn in the light. Instead, sort of look down. And zoom in sort of on the main path and you can see a rabbit right there. Take a picture of the rabbit and that is what will get us the achievement. And now we can just go up, take a picture of Dawn, reading a book for some reason. And <laughs> here goes the achievement unlocked. But Although then again, that's basically the equivalent of us just being on our phones all day, isn't it? So from this next picture, head down into the right slightly and take a picture of the bird. And what we have to do is actually go to the left and interact with our dad, Big Sam. Pissing up against a tree, uh, but it's very nice and serene, beautiful looking pictures, great looking scenery, but the best looking scenery is looking at your own father's dong. How do you feel about looking at your own father's penis? Oh, sorry, I said penis. One person's going to get super offended now. <laughs> anyway, from this bit, what we can do is head to the right. Uh, don't take a picture of the fish, but if we keep going right and up, there's going to be a deer or an elk. Right there, just on the rocks. Take a picture of that. Good eyes down. Right. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. No, <laughs> go to the left. <laughs> Interact and take a picture of Dawn with the gun. And then his own dad is going to get behind his daughter. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I like where this is going. Um, take a picture of the deer again. That is going to be a hell of a shot, to be fair. A hell of a picture as well. Sam was a very talented um, photographer. Uh, but at this point, we can actually move Sam uh, just by pressing the left stick. So press the left stick, start going up. Again, apart from his dubious getting behind his own daughter movements, which I'm not uh, particularly keen on Sam doing, to be fair. Head all up, and then what's going to happen is... Whoops! Whoops, it is, buddy, you died. And that is how Sam died. And he is, yeah, <laughs> so, and he died. The end. That's another really unfortunate end, to be honest. But at least he's lived, at least, at least he was 33. That's something, right? He'd had a kid. He lived his life-ish. So, there we go. From here then, have, you can have a look at the pictures if you want, but directly behind you is a door that we can go through, another little secret area. God damn, this family are incredible at building... <laughs> stuff where you're not probably supposed to be building. Keep heading through. Again, quite a linear path this bit. Right? My mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as you open up the gate, have a look in the crib. Look at the creepy um, doll in the crib as well. That actually just cracked my pants up. Oh, sorry, it wasn't a creepy doll. That's the baby. Sorry. Oh, whoops. My bad. Um, interact with the divorce contract, and this is actually the saddest one of the game, because this is a death that could be easily preventable. And by the way, if this kid's only one, who's leaving a one-year-old in a bath all alone anyway? That's, that's pretty much neglectful, that. Uh, but for this bit, we're playing as the frog. Now, press the right trigger to make the frog jump. And eventually, it's going to sort of play out like a circus scene. But we are also coming up to another missable achievement. And that is for knocking all of Gregory's letters off the side right there. So, if you press and hold the right trigger, that makes you jump very far. So, again, if you just hold the uh, press the right trigger ever so slightly, 
Again, don't worry if... <laughs> I mean, what you could have done is just not answered the phone. But, you know, up to you. Whatever, biatch. So, make sure to get rid of all the... You're not under a time limit or anything, so just get rid of all the letters on the side of the bath. It can be quite finicky and tricky to get the sort of timing of the jumps right with the frog. Um, but as soon as you do that, the achievement will unlock and we can just move on with the story bit. So again, no pressure, you're not under time or anything. Just while our neglectful dickhole of a mother just goes, You're one years old, right? You can bath all by yourself. Yeah, you'd be fine, just fine. Oh, come on, R. R R R R. Man, I am the worst. Oh, okay, we got it. So, Gregory is off. Now what we can do, when we jump up, we can now get the whale on the right-hand side. We need to get the whale down. Um, I'm actually doing I'm just doing a bit of circus jumping at the minute, to be fair. That was quite enjoyable, especially with the music. But what's going to happen is we're going to jump onto the whale. The whale's going to turn around. Now when we jump onto the whale back, he is going to spring us up. I mean... When that happens, we need to move to the left-hand side, so... Eventually... Again, you need to be kind of a way away from him, but... Uh, I mean, the controls are pretty awful, but... I'm just making it seem worse for some reason. Uh, so, don't try to get underneath the whale, because he's it's just not going to work. You need to get a little bit away from him, jump up on him... And, as you can see, his big flubber blubber will bounce us up. So, go to the... Oh, sorry, right-hand side, get the soap. Bop! Delicious, lovely, and just do the same. Jump on the whale, go to the left, and then go to the right to get a bunch of people jumping in, a bunch of toy people. I can feel them slipping away. Sorry about that, Gregory. I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. No, maybe if she'd unplugged the plug. And just, you know, put the actual plug away. So jump on the whale and interact with the uh, tap again. So she unplugged it and then plugged it back in. Is a one woman stupid? How can a one woman be so stupid? So there's nothing left to do on this bit now. Um, we do have to do a little bit of swimming with Gregory, but... Yeah, so, I mean, that's as pretty much neglectful as you can get. Oh, sorry, I know you're also freezing as well, but I got to go and answer the phone. I've just got to answer the phone. So, interact, uh, just, um, interact. Follow where the whale is, directly in front of us, head towards the bath plug, and that will end at little Gregory's section. One years old, just, that is a sad, I'm not even going to say, and he died, because that's really sad. I don't like, when it comes to babies and stuff, man, yeah, I'm just not good. Thank you, want you. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam. <laughs> All right, so that is the saddest death of the family, more or less done. So over to the right. We're going to interact with Gus now, who, again, was a teenager. Um, but all we're doing for Big Gus Wazowski is when the words and the dialogue options appear on screen, you basically just need to fly through them. So, and, and that's basically it. So as soon as the wind starts picking up, you need to interact with the chairs, which are on the ground, and then you just sort of smash everything up as well. So anytime you see some dialogue options, just uh, interact, fly into them with all the words. And that, and that is what will get the dialogue moving. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom or the words that... I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger... The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. The 
Rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, Make the music louder! I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. And he died. So, that's a bit unfortunate that one, again. Um. Yeah, I wouldn't be called Gus personally. I just reminds me of the weak, weak kid Gus from Recess. So left hand side from where we just found Gus's eulogy and climbing up. Again, pretty cool idea to have this. This must be like a thousand story house or something. This must cost a bit, apart from all the death and curses in it and everything. So we're gonna jump up and eventually we're gonna start heading to the left. Again, Edith should do this automatically, so don't do any panic. Go straight in front of us and just interact with Dawn's uh, picture before moving on and getting out of the window. So again, we don't even have to interact with anything. With Dawn right there. So heading up the steps onto the left-hand side as we come outside. And just keep going up these little steps to the left, going through the next two doors. The house had to get a little bigger. Bruh! You got a bunker with a, with your 60 year old uncle downstairs. What the hell? You don't need to get it any bigger. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do is this is another closer look achievement. This is, should be 9 out of 10. So interact with the door straight in front of us. And yeah, Milton never actually particularly died. He just sort of disappeared. So to the right and then have a look at the window on the left. We're going to open it up. Again, not a mini level that we need to do. Rather, we need to interact with the flip book. No one knows. Nobody knows. As we interact with the rope and go down or up. Nobody knows where Milton went. Milton, I'm sure that's uh, sterilizing things for baby stuff. Anyway, interact with the flip book. And again, so press and hold the right trigger. And press the left stick or right stick to go all the way through. And that ends little Milton's part. and disappeared. And he probably died. So, that's another one for the books. Drop it down. I'll tell you what, if you were a kid, you wouldn't really want to be growing up with this family, would you? Oh, everyone's dead. Oh, that's something to look forward to then. I'll be dead by the time I'm 13 years old. Anyway, coming back through the window, and then we're heading right. And we're going past the bridge, but this time we're going to be going left up the steps instead of straight through. So here, go left, heading up the steps, and we're going to be interacting with our brother, brother, our brother Lewis. So this is the where we should get the closer look achievement as well. Have a look through the door. Nice 22, there we go. So again, providing you've waited for Edith to chat enough, this is where you should unlock the a closer look achievement. So heading up on the boat here on the left hand side, go to the right, interact with the window to pop your nugget through there. <clears throat> Lovely job. I was going to say why you're doing things so slowly, but you are 22 weeks pregnant, so I'll give you that, mate. And as we head down, just go to the next part, sort of where all the computer and everything is, and then just interact with the letter. And now we've got a really interesting sort of level to do, to be honest. It's interesting because we have to use both the right stick and the left stick one to move Lewis and one to keep gutting the fish 
or slapping that fishy's head off. Shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. So here we go then. When we get a fish on the left hand side, you need to use the right stick to move your hand, grab the fish automatically, and put it over to the right. Then put it up, then you've got to push it up to uh, put it on the conveyor belt. So grab a fish with your right stick, get it over to the slicey boy, and then flick it up. So that's all we're doing for that bit. But in the top left hand corner, we're just going to slowly see. There we go. A, another bit of dialogue. So start press, start moving with the left stick while you are simultaneously gutting the fish with the right stick. So it can be kind of um, confusing to start to start it off, to be honest, but you do end up getting just used to it. So, again, it's kind of a linear path. There's nothing really special um, of where to go. Just head up through the waves right there, by the way. Apart from that bit then. Okay, I'll just explain that bit. Heading up through the waves. I'm still getting used to the controls, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but apart from that, we're just heading up and or basically all the way to the right. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination, so he could do whatever he wished. I tell you what, mind, if you do have a completely monotonous, crappy job, especially like something in a factory where they treat, where the bosses treat you with absolute garbage, pay you minimum wage they, well, while they take all the money and shout at you for everything, and lock the toilets and the doors because they're just absolute dickholes. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> did I rant on a bit there? <laughs> but what the point of that is, our mind tends to wonder, and that is the point with Lewis. He is bored as hell. Which, to be fair, doing that all day can get a bit smelly and a bit boring. So you just come up... I mean, we've all done it in crappy, boring jobs. I mean, we've all come up with scenarios and... You know, I, I used to think that I would be um, any good at YouTube videos. But um, I'm still waiting for that day, to be honest. Which is a, <laughs> it's a damn shame. Um, but again, don't worry about this bit. Anyway, we're just crashing. I also used to dream about winning, winning the lottery. And guess how many times that's happened? A grand total of 10 times, if you minus 10. Yeah, I'm super rich at being poor. Sad. So, uh, Lewis just keeps sailing on. He is basically, he's basically dead inside anyway. Which, to be fair, if you're growing up with a cursed family like this, is not surprising. And you're chopping off fish heads for a living. Jesus Christ, it's a lot of fish. Uh, but basically, as we're going to see, there's going to be a couple of uh, choices you can make. It literally does not matter which one you pick because you 
The only thing that changes is the literal slight dialogue option now. That is it. So pick what you want and we will get through to the end. The Queen was on her own quest for... Radiant Rainbows. He followed the sound of her... Electric sitter. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. Now we are at the ultimate of, I don't actually know what I'm doing in my job anymore. I've actually made many a mistake being bored, especially in my last goddamn place. All they did was put on Radio 2, and Radio 2 is like, just, it's like somebody just pierces a drill through my ear and says, Ah, oh, look, listen to this, this is all about the same. Especially with your uh, Zoe balls and everything, ugh. Most of everyone is just crap on Radio 2, and that's why my mind also used to wonder, so I can kind of get what Lewis is up to. So, when you finish work, and the sad reality is, is that you are basically a nobody chopping off fish heads for a living. Um, yeah, it can get kind of depressing, I suppose. Um, having a look at the dirtiest bloody doors, walls and floors ever. Uh, but all we are doing now is just heading straight all the way down until you can see Lewis in the distance. We're going to go past him and up all the fish. That's a lot of fish, to be fair, that he has just chopped off. But we're going to get on that anyway. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. I still thought I could save him. even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him. Oh my god, I feel like if winner oh my god, I feel like I want a prize or something. <laughs> so all we gotta do is just go up and around and we are going to get a crown on and we're gonna live happily ever after. Bend down his head. I think you know. Oh shit, did I say happily ever after? What I meant was, he uh, cut his own head off. And he died. So that's a bit unlucky there for little Lewis. Uh, but, but you'll have to blame his mother on that one. She is the one that forced him into taking that fish job in the first place. So, 
was really cool until he decided to slice his own head off. Right, so that's basically most of the family members done. So we can now back out here and go to the right. This is where the exit is, right next to the older uh, anime-style tentacle arm. Tentacle pornography arm. And we're just going to head back up these next wooden yeah, set of steps. Funeral. My mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. So as we enter the door here, on the right hand side as we walk in, there's going to be a set of steps we are going to climb up. Uh, for some reason I thought there was something in the kitchen that we needed to do, but there isn't. So don't worry about coming in the kitchen, this is just all bullcrap. But we are heading up the stairs, and we're going to see what's happened to big little Edith. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. That whole last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. So just a little bit more walking left to do then. We are coming up very close to the end of the game now, which is nice. So head down the hallway. And then sort of to the left with the open sort of cabinet is right there. Again, a ton of books. Y you might want to invest in like a library. Or you might want to invest in stop reading so much. Or you might want to invest in a TV, damn it. No, okay, that's the lazy man's way, really, isn't it? But who cares? It's my favourite thing. So, again, it's a pretty linear path from here. We're going to the right, just more or less uh, head towards the candles. Oh! Ooh, so we're leaving tonight, are we? Interact with the book on the table next to the typewriter. And we're, again, we're going to be doing a little bit more walking with Big Granny Edie. But there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way up. And again, this part is pretty much like linear algebra. It's pretty straightforward. Because <laughs> uh, uh, algebra, linear algebra, is, it means to go straight forward. That's that's basically the whole joke there. It's it's it ain't much, but it's honest work. Thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. So in here, just keep going straight forward. We're going to see this big rock. And then what we're going to do is turn to the right. So turn your camera to the right. There we go. And then we're just going to follow the rock around. And that is basically what's going to get us to the next area. So just follow the rock around here. And then just keep going straight as soon as Edie starts talking. So just keep it straight. Again, just like linear algebra, keep going straight forward. <laughs> oh man, I mean a math joke. That makes me am's smart right now. I am so smart. S-M-R-T. I mean S-M-A-R-T. Forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a 
lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and- Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I'd kick my mom square in the girl balls if she took my diary off me. So, goodbye, Grandma Edie. Screw you and your wretched, cursed house. I would rather live past um, 14 years old. Thank you very much. Screw you, Edie. Up your guts, mate. Up your fucking guts. So, we got a bit of Rebecca Black now. Friday, Friday. Gonna get down on Friday. And if anyone remembers that song, <laughs> I'm glad we were both cursed listening to that crap forever. Um, and if anybody doesn't know the reference, she'd done that. Rebecca Black, that song, done that in the video. It's, uh, yeah, pretty much, that's pretty much all there is to explain that. Right, move this little wordy daffodil thing. No, it's not a daffodil, is it? It's, it's a blowy thing. You blow it and it goes all nuts. One of those flowers, yeah. Just keep doing that. Dialogue's gonna start. The rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while, and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. And now this is everyone's favorite part. We are inside Edith right now. so. This is apparently what a uh, vagina looks like, and it's a pretty long one as well. Um, so if you wonder what the inside looked like, according to the guys who made this, this is it. So just keep heading toward the hole. <laughs> um, but we are going for a swim. Yeah, it's all slimy in here. Ew, it's all slimy. So we're going to get out. Wah, wah, wah. I'm a little baby. All I do is cry and want to sleep all day. Lucky bastard. <laughs> And it's this is past. basically it but then. So as that, it turns out, I want you to um, be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here. Well, good luck. Let's just say she died. So after all that, going through all that with Edish, and once again, it's a goddamn bittersweet ending, and I don't like it. At least they could have gone. Edith, oh look, she broke the curse. Her and her son ha live happily ever after. No, now the kids just like. Awesome, you get let me let me this diary, which basically says all my family members are gonna die, so I'm gonna die soon. Cheers, ma'am, you're a legend, mate. Thanks for letting me know I've got about three years left to live. Cheers very much. Right, so for the credits, what um you have to look at the credits basically until we get to a picture frame, which again I love the I love these uh, credits here. Uh, looking at everyone who worked on the game and their baby pictures and their kid pictures. Awesome idea. But we need to keep looking at the credits until we get to a guy called a Johan. That is going to unlock the Thank You Johan achievement. And then, after that, we can skip the credits. So, you should get the achievement there for everything ending, completing all the stories. Which, again, is just another bittersweet ending. Like, why? Why can't a game go, Oh, yeah, this one, we're all happy. See? Everyone else died except me, and I'm super good for it. I just... Why? Anyway, so the credits are about um, three, sort of three minutes long-ish. But again, the only person that we're looking out for is Johan. And that's not him. And 
That's not him. That's a art palette thing. Anyway, just keep going. Put your controller down. Enjoy a little rest for a second. Again, if you haven't played this game. And just wait until Johan unlocks. Aha! There he was. So, you that, that is the only achievement, by the way, uh, tied to the credits. And that's for seeing Johan's name. So, now we can back out of the um, credits if you want to. Uh, not uh, If they don't work and you can't back out of it, I'm pretty sure you'll just be able to quit the game and reload back in. Uh, but otherwise, like I said, it's about two and a half minutes, two, two and a half minutes for the credits to finish there. So, now we've got the ability to replay a story. We've only got one achievement left. And we have to play Calvin's story again. So, from here, just press OK. Click Replay a Story. And then go on to Calvin. And then all we're doing, like I said once again, is just... We have to interact with his spacesuit. Do the swinging again. And that is the only thing that unlocks the achievement. This is... It's as simple as that. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was My it. brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. Swing low, swing high again. Sorry, I shouldn't be singing an English song. That's disgusting. Just like all the English call the Welsh sheep shaggers. It's disgusting, I say. Anyway. As soon as we are done with this level, the last achievement will unlock, and that will be the final end of the game. He finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Alvin, I'm not gonna tell you again. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. And maybe he'd still be here, but I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. I'm flying without oh crap another rock see you think if you could replay chapters you could just go back in time and save them all but uh, well you stuck with the cursed family and, and apparently so are you Edith since you just basically given your son a death sentence <laughs> Now he's going to be shitting himself for all time. So nice one. But anyway, that is that then, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much for watching. If you did play this for the very first time, I hope you enjoyed the game and the story. And I hope you enjoyed the guide and that it helped you out as well. And, well, I hope my first game from the game, my own personal Game Pass challenge went well. A lot more to go. But thank you so, so much for watching again, guys and gals. If it did help, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. And again, huge, massive shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. But that'll be that for this one, guys and gals. I will see you in the next Game Pass game for the next challenge. See you then. Big love.